What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I am a professional drum teacher, a gigging musician, and a lifelong Chicago Bears fan, and I have been those things for well over 20 years. That's right, it's Super Bowl week, and we're going to get into the festivities and seeing that this React video on a uh, Tom Petty Super Bowl halftime performance is the closest that the Chicago Bears are going to get to the Super Bowl. I'm going to wear my gear. The halftime Super Bowl show, it can go anywhere from phenomenal, fantastic, like Prince, uh, Lady Gaga was really good, The Who was awesome, and it can go all the way to not good. If you know what I'm saying. But we're not going to talk about all those shitty performances during the halftime uh, Super Bowl show. We're going to talk about my all-time favorite, one of my all-time favorite artists, and one of my all-time favorite drummers playing with that artist. We're going to be watching Tom Petty, and we're going to be watching Free Falling. No, this isn't Free Falling. Yeah, it's Free Falling. And we're going to be watching Steve Ferroni. Of course, Steve Ferroni was the drummer for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers from 94 on. Uh, Stan Lynch, of course, the great Stan Lynch, the very underappreciated Stan Lynch, was the drummer up until then. The original drummer on this is Phil Jones, I think. But if I, uh, if I remember correctly, we're going to see Steve Ferroni... Uh, uh, expand upon the original drum track of this song. This is also the first ballad that we're going to see on the channel, and we're going to really talk about playing drums in ballads. So, uh, please stick around for the end of the video, and I'm going to kind of give my thoughts on Tom Petty, because I have many, because I love him. Uh, but, before that, if you all think I uh, deserve it, you think I've done a good job, please give me a like, a comment, and share. Give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell, but only if you think I've deserved it. Because the algorithm lately has been kicking my ass. If you really, really dig it, check out my Patreon, check out my merch page. So, uh, you know, go Bears. And let's watch the master of the American song form, Tom Petty. And the master craftsman that is Steve Ferroni. Play Free Fallen. God bless you. Thank you. You know, a lot of those halftime Super Bowl shows are the same. This is not. Because this is one of the greatest bands to ever be assembled. And they ain't going to be She's a good girl. It's crazy about Elvis. Loves horses. This is one of the greatest songs ever written, of course. And your boyfriend Tom Petty has written about 57 of the greatest songs ever written. The great Mike Campbell. And it's a long day. Living in Reseda, there's a freeway Running through the yard, and I'm a bad boy Cause I don't even miss you. Okay, so if you watch my channel at all, you know that I kind of rail against uh, YouTube, Shred, Culture, and Drum Olympians And it's because of this This drum groove is one of the easiest grooves you could ever play it's one, two, and I don't have my bass drum uh, pad set up. I gotta start bringing that again. One, two, and. Dun, dun. Here's the thing about playing ballads and playing simpler grooves. This will sound kind of metaphysical. It's the only way I can describe it. You have to put more of your DNA, you have to have more concentration to play softer and slower you know i think it's easier to stay in time when you play faster <clears throat> that's just my opinion when you're playing ballads and you're playing more contemplative contemplatively 
you have to have just complete concentration to get the space between those notes because here's here's the number one thing about groove the groove isn't the impact of the note it's the space between the notes and steve ferroni was a master space maker is. i'm a bad boy for breaking her heart You know, who doesn't like Tom Petty? Tom Petty's, he's just one of those people that like, no matter what genre that you listen to the most, you love Tom Petty. All the metal freaks that I know, I love Tom Petty. Okay. So in the original, there is uh, like a little marching breakdown thing that happens like during the bridge. But Steve Ferroni brings it back a few times. And I love any kind of uh, rock drum part that incorporates marching band stuff. That's what you're hearing right here. This is great shit. Name in the sky, gonna free fall. Out into nothing, gonna leave. Great, it's like 2008. Yeah, I'm free. I think 2006 was when really the Bears won the Super Bowl last year. Just, yeah. Ben Montanch on keyboards, man. This is one of the all time greatest bands ever fucking assembled. Oh, God, we were going to bring that back, man. That is such a beautiful musical drum feel that brings us back out of that little sort of breakdown right here. It's not going to get you a million views on your Drum Olympian video on YouTube. But what it will do is get you that gig and allow you to play with the master of the American song form. Let's check out that drum feel. This is fucking mwah. Yep. I don't want to stop this chorus, it's so good. This is what this is what a fucking Super Bowl halftime show should fucking be. Maroon 5, get the fuck out of here. should be this. It should be music that that has reached and enriched everyone. Is anyone really fired up about seeing The weekend? Like, you know, like the first, like, 25 some, like, yeah, first 20, 25 Super Bowls. It's just marching bands. I'd rather see some kick-ass, like, HBCU su uh, uh, marching bands than the fucking weekend. Um... Talk about Tom Petty for a second. Of course, please stick around for the end because I'm going to really ex expound upon this. I've said this forever. If there was an equation for making a memorable hit song that lasts generations, somewhere in like, I think, is it like Tom Petty from like northern Florida, like the redneck part of Florida? Somewhere down there, there's a fucking chalkboard, and it has, in Tom Petty's handwriting, the fucking perfect equation to write the perfect American song form song. And he did it every decade from the 70s until he unfortunately passed far too early. He is the master. He is the ma... <clears throat> Here's something else I say. Uh, you know, if you're a songwriter, I'm a bit of a songwriter too. If you're a songwriter, you ever, every songwriter has, uh, like, by accident, not knowing and, and, and unconscious, unconsciously written a song that, like, rips off someone else. Like, it happens all the time. Like, a guy comes in or a girl comes in and, like, here's my song. And, like, oh, shit, that's this song, bro. 
if you haven't done that and like was writing your own original piece, but it ended up basically being like a Tom Petty chord progression with like Tom Petty melodies, uh, uh, then you're probably not that good of a songwriter. I love playing ballads. It's one of my favorite things. Got all this space. Space making. That's what drummers do. Steve Peroni makes the good space. Mike Campbell plays all the good shit. Tom Petty writes all or wrote all the good shit. Man, I remember watching that Super Bowl. I can't remember who it was. It was 08. I can't remember who it was. Fucking probably the Patriots, right? Probably the Patriots. And somebody. Was that like Patriots Giants? I don't know. Um, Tom Petty. Uh, you know, obviously we're a drum channel, but we're a music channel first. And Steve Ferroni, obviously known for uh, being in the average white band. He's a British cat. And, you know, he took over a, a very important drum throne in the history of rock music, being Tom Petty's drummer. Uh, now, of course, Stan Lynch. Great. Great. Stan Lynch is super underrated. Not enough people talk about him. Also, all those high harmonies on all those Stan Lynch records, that's fucking him singing it. Tom Petty, the master. He is the flat-out master. And I just remember uh, watching this at the Super Bowl and just being like, fucking thank God this will be like a, a, a beautiful reminder to everyone that may have forgotten about him. You know, like, dude, Tom Petty has been killing it for decades. Uh, uh, this was, I'm pretty sure I'm, it's 08. <clears throat> By then, 70s, 80s, 90s, 10s, uh, you know, he was putting out quality material. And not just quality material, material that hit, that became huge and became the anthems and became the songs of our youth and the songs of our lives. You know, Tom Petty, man, he wrote a big part of the soundtrack to all of our lives and what's a better contribution to the world than doing that uh tom petty man i fucked up and i never got seen play it was one of those things he was like old faithful i had tickets to two different concerts and both times i had gigs that superseded and i did not get to go see those shows but it was always there in my mind I was like well okay i missed these I'll see him next time, because Tom Petty, just he's always going to be there. And then he wasn't, and that's a, there's a big uh, lesson to be learned. Go see your heroes while you still can, because unfortunately, they may be taken from us far too early. Steve Ferroni, a master groover, you know, like, he's just a master. Go listen to the Average White Band stuff. That's where he was, like, really playing, like, funk, low, low down, badass drumming. But he killed everything with... Tom Petty, so now let's talk about the Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, they're, they're hit or miss for me. They're real hit or miss. Uh, man, Lady Gaga was one of the best ones. That was great. Also, uh, my podcast with my three uh, much more talented friends, Jimmy, John, and Adam, uh, will be released on Saturday, and we are doing the subject of the halftime uh Super Bowl halftime show. So please check that out. That'll be premieres on Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, man, the Prince one was great. Rolling Stones, they played it, right? And the Rolling Stones played it. They, 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 they were great. Kiss played like a pre-show. I don't think that counts. Uh, and then some, and let's see, like, the Shakira, Jennifer Lopez one, I mean, that was, like, great to watch with the volume off. But when it comes down to just, like, music, I want to see somebody up there just killing it and playing badass. Uh, and this is what we got. You know, Prince was plugged in. He was plugged in. The Who was plugged in. Uh, everybody in the comments section, please discuss. Let's have a, uh, a discussion on your favorite and least favorite halftime Super Bowl performances. And then, you know, after, like, Sunday, let's all fucking figure out if The weekend actually did a good job or not. I'm rooting for him because... I want to be entertained. I'm going to be watching Super Bowl. I never miss the Super Bowl. So, Tom Petty, thank you for uh, the soundtrack of our lives. You know what I mean? Like, thank you. Thank you so much, Tom Petty. I, I'm, I am not profound enough to uh, uh, tell you how important he is. 
but Steve Ferroni's still out there, and he's still killing it. Mike Campbell's out there still killing it. Man, this whole band, they're still going to be killing it uh, because they're some of the most wanted sidemen in the business. Every band wants Mike Campbell in the guitar spot. Every band wants Steve Ferroni, and they want Ben Montanch. So, thank you all for watching it. If you all enjoyed all this, please give me a like, a comment, and a share. Give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. Go Chicago Bears. Keep practicing until it's easy.